Hey everyone, how are you doing today? This is a video I've been meaning to make for uh, quite some time now, uh, speaking about a question about Airbnb that's been brought up several times on the internet and in some community online forums about uh, what to do if you have an Airbnb rental, which is a short, short-term rental where the guest doesn't leave at the scheduled time. What I mean by that is there is a lot of material online about Airbnb squatters and people who stay in 30-day rentals uh, and they they stay for a couple of months and then they either stop paying rent, they uh, refuse to leave, and the host is left with a squatter situation where they have to be evicted. Uh, those situations are, like I said, for long-term rentals. Not a whole lot out there, practically nothing out there really about a short, short-term rental, which is less than 25 days. Uh, the 25-day mark is a legal definition in most every state where someone, where a guest in your home would pass between what's called a transient and a tenant. A uh, transient is someone who is just passing through, who doesn't need a lease, who is there basically at your good graces as the owner of the home and they can be asked to leave at any time for any reason and be denied entry. A tenant is someone who's legally protected by a variety of laws uh, which says that they have to have a lease to be in the property and they cannot be forcibly removed except by legal action which is through a court. So the situation I'm going to talk about here, I myself am an Airbnb host. I have rented uh, for a few years now, have had about 300 plus stays come through my house. And I've had a very small number of cases, literally less than five, where I've had people who come in for a few days and when it comes time for them to leave, they simply they simply don't. They won't leave the, the property. A couple reasons for that and we'll go through those. Now, before I proceed any further, I need to say that my experiences are for internal rooms of a larger house, which I own. Uh, the situations I'm describing would be a little bit different if you rent out full houses uh, where you are not physically at the house, especially if you're a remote host where your house is uh, you know, a couple of hours away or, or a couple of miles across town. But you can possibly still apply some of what, I, of what I'm going to talk about to your situation. I also have to mention there, but there are three states that I need to briefly call out that even for short, short-term stays, uh, they have some very strange uh, rules. Those states are Texas, California, and Florida. Now, Texas is the one I, I will speak of the most here. Uh, Texas is a state where they have, especially in smaller municipalities with local police departments, they have some very, uh, very unusual rules about people coming into private residences. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm this with a direct statute, but apparently in some Texas towns and uh, also some larger cities, there is a, uh, a law that says that if anyone has bags or possessions in your house for any amount of time, uh, be it five minutes, one day, 30 days, they cannot be removed by, by, uh, by force, by law enforcement. And a lot of stories about people calling the police on, you know, the guy who crashed on the couch on Friday and they want to, they want to kick him out Saturday and the police will come, they'll see a suitcase in the hall and they'll just say, sorry, it's a civil matter. And it doesn't matter how long it is. The, the, in most states, 30 days, you have to be a tenant, but in Texas, apparently not. So if you live in Texas, I, I would recommend uh, researching what the laws are in your local area. Now, California and Florida, uh, I mentioned those two together because uh, they have some very liberal laws in those states, especially California. And from what I have heard from a lot of people who host in those two states, the uh, police will not become involved in an Airbnb guest overstaying uh, in, in the residence under any circumstances even if even if the the host is correct that it's below 30 days and they're not a tenant uh california especially i hear this where police will just come and say you know sorry it's a civil matter and they won't even they won't even care to listen to you about you know what the laws are and the fact that they're not yet a tenant and florida very similar um so again if you live in california or florida 
and you do rent Airbnbs, you might want to consult a local attorney, or local law enforcement about what to do. But you can still apply some of the things that I'm speaking of here. So again, uh, we're, we're talking now about people who are in the house less than 30 days. In my experience, the, the situations I've dealt with have been maybe three, four, five days at the most. And they'll, they'll check in uh, on a Friday afternoon. Uh, the stay will go fine. And then, it'll, and then four days later, it'll be, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, checkout time is coming, and they have no intention of leaving. Uh, they're just sitting in the room, not, not getting ready to leave. Then checkout time, time comes and goes, and they're still in the house. So why does that happen? Um, sometimes it's innocent. Sometimes you'll see people that are waiting for rides. It'll be raining outside. They'll say, hey, you know, my ride isn't going to be here for another hour. I, I just need to sit inside till they get here. And um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, it, in my own hosting experience, I in the very beginning, I was kind of loose about that kind of thing. But if you're if you're getting to be a serious host, uh, you you kind of still have to enforce the rules in those cases. But those are innocent cases. Uh, sometimes it's it's inconsiderate cases where the person you know always had a plan to leave like an hour or two late, but they just didn't want to tell you. They didn't care. Uh, I, I've had a few people like that who they'll leave about 45 minutes to an hour late and it's very clear that that wasn't a mistake, that wasn't an accident, that was simply what they had planned to do all along. And those people, uh, you can deal with them in the Airbnb review. You can you know, pretty much say in the review that this person deliberately stayed past checkout and uh, you know, there were some difficulties getting them out of the house. Uh, so those first two cases uh, are resolved somewhat easily. The third case which I've seen is when the person has nowhere to go and that is the most serious case because those are people that literally they they are either homeless or some kind of situation has developed where your place is the place they're living at and the money will run out, the time will run out, and they don't have anywhere to go. So they'll simply stay in the room or stay in the house and they'll try to appeal to your sympathy and they'll say, you know, hey, do me a solid, be my friend, I don't have anywhere to go. And those are the most serious because they don't have anything to lose. They probably don't care about the reviews. They, some of them actually have fake accounts where they're using somebody else's name. So those you have to be careful about. And that's what the bulk of this video is going to be speaking of. So the, uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is preventive measures here. Uh, the number one thing you need to have in an Airbnb when you're doing short, short-term rentals is an electronic lock with a remote program to activate and deactivate door codes because that is essential that you're not getting involved with giving people keys and you're not getting involved in personally letting somebody in and out because if you are in that kind of situation, it is extremely easy for the people to take advantage of you to start saying that, you know, can I stay just a little bit longer? Uh, in my own hosting experience in the beginning, I, uh, di I was in that situation and I was, I will tell you, I was taken advantage of multiple times by guests who overstayed their booking. So I since then have an electronic locking system and it is designed to turn on their door code 15 minutes prior to arrival and deactivate it 15 minutes afterwards. And that can be remotely done on my phone. Some of the more advanced programs do it automatically for you. And that's what you need because when there is an M, when there is a non-human element like that where the lock simply will deactivate 15 minutes after checkout, then that sometimes just discourages people to stay in the house because for one thing, they can't go outside because in my in my own case, if they were to leave and close the door behind them, the door would lock, they wouldn't be able to get back in the house. And any request to re-enter the house, then they have to pay a late checkout fee uh, because um, if someone were to contact me and say, you know, hey, I, I left at checkout time at, at 10 a.m., but now it's 1045, I need to get back in the house when my ride isn't here, I'll say, sure, you know, I'll, I'll send you the link over Airbnb messaging. Uh, you'll, you'll agree to late checkout, you'll pay a fee, it's a small fee by the way, and um, then you let them back in the house. I should also point out late checkout fees are, are up to you as the host if you trust them. If you had problems with the person, if there's indications that they're trying to get back in the house for a bad reason, then you can just say that, you know, the late checkout doesn't apply today, we have another guest coming, we have a housekeeper who's on her way. And, um, you know, whatever you want to say to make it clear that they can't get back in the house. If they start talking about, 
their possessions are still in the house. They need to get back in the house to get something. Then in my case, I just apologize to them. I tell them that, you know, I'll be home as soon as I can. I'll go in and retrieve the, the property for you. But I'll just tell them that because you are no longer a registered guest, uh, you can't legally come back in the house without either paying late checkout uh, or, uh, you know, having a, having a registered booking. Now, that might seem cold, and some people on Airbnb have, have told me that. They say, oh, no, you're supposed to be the guest's friend. You're supposed to, you know, do them a solid, be their pal. But you simply cannot operate that way uh, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, hundreds of guests coming to your house, especially for, for just a few days because these people will be strangers to you. Uh, it's a little bit different if you're dealing with somebody that you know or somebody who's in the house a couple of weeks. You know who they are. You've gotten to know them. But somebody who comes in over a weekend and you don't know them and then Monday morning comes around and they start talking about they have some issues, they have some problems, you, you have to have set rules. You have to stick to them and you have to enforce them because if you don't, you're going to be taken advantage of. Okay, so next part of the, the video here is what to do if you have somebody who is deliberately not leaving your house. And we're talking at this point, it's it's on purpose. They are in the room. They are refusing to leave. Uh, they might have even moved something up against the door so the housekeeper can't come in. Uh, and I, I have had that happen in my, in my own house. So I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. The first thing you have to do, like I said, is that if somebody's in the house when they shouldn't be in there, the first thing you do is you deactivate your door lock so that they can they no longer have a valid uh, door key to come in and come out. Because that way, if they have to leave for any reason, uh, you just close the door behind them and they're out of the house. and You do not have to let them back in. Now, if you have somebody who's still in the room uh, after checkout time, th there, is a, there is a way the Airbnb actually tells hosts to proceed. Uh, you're supposed to knock on the door, slowly open the door, announce yourself, tell them that the, the booking is over, the room has to be clean now, uh, you can add in whatever you want to say, we have to strip the room for the housekeeper, we have another guest coming. And sometimes when you're standing at the door like that, the guest will get the message. Now if they don't, uh, you have every right to enter that room, it is your house, your room, so walk in the room, start stripping the room of sheets, start cleaning around the person if need be. Now, of course, there, there's an issue of if there's like an opposite sex in there, if people don't have clothes on, if they're not dressed, if they're still sleeping, then, then you might have to modify that approach. But in most cases, if you start knocking on doors, give them tea, you know, you're, it's past checkout, we need you out in about 10 minutes, we got the housekeeper coming, they'll usually get up and start moving. And if they don't, then uh, you can knock on the door again, say, hey, we need to enter the room, you give them another 10 minutes, knock on the door a third time, okay, housekeeper's on the way, we gotta, we gotta start cleaning the room. Then you start cleaning the bags around them, or you start cleaning around them. Now, um, if that doesn't work, the uh, fourth step is you can actually start physically carrying their belongings out of the room down to like your front door. I will, I will add, this is extremely important, do not ever put anyone's belongings outside of your house on your own initiative. Uh, Airbnb is set on multiple platforms, on multiple forums that uh, for some reason they actually will suspend a listing and ban a host if they discover that you uh, put somebody's bags outside without their knowledge. Uh, long story behind that, I've never had to go that far with anyone, but it's just not a good idea. So. What, what the recommendation is is start carrying their bags down to your front hallway, to your front door, and just put them by the front door. Now, typically, if you go that far, the person's going to know that they they need to get out of the house and they, they're, they're not supposed to be there. Now, typically, however, if you have somebody who is kind of getting desperate, then when you hit stage three, stage four, when you start cleaning the room, when you start carrying bags, they, they might get desperate. And... This is about as far as my own experience goes, but I have heard stories from others about what to do in this situation. If you are stripping a room, cleaning a room, trying to get a guest out of there, and they put their hands on you, uh, like physically try to stop you or they push you out of the room, they, they slam the door, barricade the door, then that's the point where you have to stop immediately and call the police, and you have to do that just, just without hesitation. Because at that point, they are no longer... Uh, I guess they are somebody who's an intruder in your house. Now, prior to that time, 
if you see this coming, if, if they're acting squirrely, they're acting unstable, then it does help to give Airbnb customer service a call if it's practical and tell them what's going on. Sometimes Airbnb will call the guest immediately and say, you know, hey, you're about to get yourself in a very serious situation. But one thing that is common around the internet is lack of uh, response time from Airbnb customer service. A lot of people have said that uh, they call about cases like this and, you know, you get told it'll be forwarded to somebody, somebody will call you back and, and nothing ever really happens. And again, Airbnb customer service can only really call the guest. They don't send agents out to your home. They don't assist you in getting the person out. So if you were at the point where somebody has physically tried to stop you from cleaning the room, where they've they've locked the door, closed the door, barricaded the door, and they're saying, I'm not going to leave your house, then it's time to get the police involved. They're an intruder. And that gets back to the first thing I said, that if you're in, if you're in some of those states that have the weird laws, uh, you really need to know what your options are, especially Texas, where if they have bags in the house, they're, they're considered living there. Uh, but in all the other places, the most time the police will come out. Now, <clears throat> when the police get involved... It is important not to make any statements that the person in your house is a renter. Uh, and I'm not saying liar, liar, pants on fire. But the best thing to say to police if they have to come out for a guest who won't leave your residence is you thought they were gone and they appear to have come back in the house. Because that makes it look like that they were a, a, a transient uh, gummed through your house, they checked out, they left, and for some reason unknown to anybody, they have gotten back in your home and now they're, they're barricaded up in the room. Because at that point, there's no question at all that they're a trespasser. And again, you know, um, that's mainly for your protection. If, if they, if they have been there the whole time, they never left, just, you know, you could say that, you know, checkout came and went and you thought they were, they were gone from the residence, but now you discover that they're up in the room making crazy statements about they're not going to leave. Um, and most of the time when you, when you make statements like that to the police, the police will simply go in that room or go in the, the area of the house and tell them that they're a trespasser. Um, so the most extreme case I've ever heard about is someone who actually did have somebody that was in the house for just a couple of days and barricaded themselves in the room. Uh, there were some drugs involved, I believe. And the police came and it took like, it took about two or three hours to get him out. Thankfully, I have never had that happen to me. The, the, the most I have ever gotten to the point is where I had to actually uh, start cleaning a room around somebody. And that, that gets into the real world stories here that I'm going to share with you about the, uh, the four cases that I have had where I've had people with uh, short term, short rentals, two, three, four days where it came, uh, the checkout time came and they didn't leave. Uh, the first case very early in my hosting career was what I call the late departer. Uh, this guy check out, I think then we had it at 11 o'clock and he would typically, he did this a couple times actually, he would just not leave the house until noon. He was just routine with him and he would say that, you know, he had, he had rides coming, this kind of thing. So eventually with him, we, we told him that, that it was now automatic that, there was a late checkout fee that if he was in the house after 11:30, it was automatically applied to his account and we would send it over the Airbnb uh, resolution center. And once he got the uh, message that that was going to be done automatically, regardless of what he said, whatever stories he told us at the table, then uh, he started basically, he started paying the late checkout fee every single time. We actually made quite a lot of money off that guy, actually. The other case we had was uh, a mother and son who were, uh, in the house with uh, some very shaky situations where they didn't really have anywhere to go, and those are the those are the people that we had to actually enter the room and start cleaning around them. Uh, in that situation, once we stripped the beds, and you know the the son didn't have anywhere to sit, the bed was stripped. Uh, I think we actually pushed the mattress up against the wall to send an even firmer message. They, they got the message and went downstairs and left the house. But uh, ironically, they also tried to get back in the house, but it was after checkout time and the door code didn't work. And uh, the mother knocked on the door and we said, you know, Hey, your, your reservation's over. There's really nothing we can do. Um, we did not give them late checkout option because it was suspicious about what they were up to. We thought they were probably trying to stay in the house and, uh, and say that they didn't have anywhere to go. So that's how we got them out. We started cleaning the room. We deactivated the door codes so they couldn't get back in. 
The, uh, the final case was a homeless couple who also had nowhere to go, and they were the most serious because they were the ones that we actually had to carry bags down out of the room. Uh, they simply, uh, checkout time came, and they, they simply were, were not even packed. I mean, they were just in the house, just sitting in the room, acting like it was just another full day. So we did all the things I have said. We said the house fever's coming. We stripped the bed, started cleaning around them. And when they still didn't leave, we started carrying bags down. Now, that leads into another case where once they were actually out of the house, they started asking us questions about could we watch their bags and a lot of guests do that you'll you'll if you're a host you might see cases where uh, a person will say you know hey i checked out at at one o'clock but my flight's not till five i'm going to leave my bags in your hallway come back and get them i'm going to you know can i leave my bags on the curb will you watch them and my strongest advice i can give you is do not get involved in a situation like that because that makes you liable for their possessions and if they at any point go to airbnb and say something was stolen or missing you can get yourself into some very, very serious trouble with Airbnb. There are some hosts who do a baggage check where they give them receipts and things of that nature. And if you're one of those hosts, you know, more power to you. I myself don't do that. And if somebody starts talking about, can you wash my bags? I just say, you know, hey, after you're, after you check out, you know, we, we don't, we don't watch bags. We don't, you're not a registered guest anymore. So we don't offer that service. So I hope this is uh, some useful information. Like I said, a lot of the situations you hear about in the news and, and some of the other videos online are speaking about the squatters and the long-term people. And you don't, really, you don't really hear a lot about what happens if you got somebody for just a few days who won't leave. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it was useful. And if anyone has any specific questions, you know, please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Good night.